In this episode, I'm sharing how I get nice natural looking skies when I process my landscape images in Photoshop. Now when I shoot, I'm shooting raw with a flat color profile. So when I bring my image into Lightroom or in this case, Photoshop, it looks pretty lifeless. So the first thing we're gonna do is get some life into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put a little bit of warmth into the shot. It's looking a little bit cooler than I remember it. And start to play things like contrast, and texture and clarity. Because there's not a lot of contrast in tones, I can afford to pop the clarity up a, a lot more than I normally would because um, because we're not getting those, those nasty white halos around the mountaintops that we very often get. And the same with dehaze. Usually when you use dehaze and clarity too much, you get a horrible white halo around shapes. Because the tonal range is fairly tight, that's not happening here. So I can afford to just push it a little bit more than I normally would. Now, this, this is starting to look better. There's a bit of life in the image. So we'll just create a little bit of an S curve just to give it even more contrast. I prefer to use the curves rather than the contrast slider. Now I'm not going to touch the color grader on this image. I'm just gonna go into the color mixer and take those blues back. I'm not a fan of greens, so I'm going to make those greens a little bit more sort of yellowy and desaturate them a little bit. I'm really happy with the way this image is looking. The mountains are coming to life. The only thing is, of course, are the clouds. They're looking very unnatural. So let's look at how we're gonna deal with that. I'm just gonna see if I can adjust those blacks a little bit more. So what we do is open up our image into Photoshop and then go back to our raw file in Camera Raw and take out all of that contrast that we put in, the clarity, the texture, the dehaze. I'm just working on the clouds. It's all about those clouds. I wanna keep them soft and light, no unnecessary contrast. Just make sure the highlights aren't gonna to be too bright there. Take out some shadow. Yeah, that's starting to look good. And I think what I'm gonna do is go into minus with dehaze, nice and soft. I'm just gonna have to up the exposure a touch there. Look how bad, look how bad the, the clouds can be if you really mess it up, mess around too much. I'm happy with the way those clouds are looking. They're soft, uh, warm. So we're gonna open this into Photoshop and now we've got two files. So I'm gonna copy the cloud file and paste it over the top of the landscape file, the contrasty file. And there they are, clouds and landscape. If we create a mask on the top layer, the cloud layer, we can get our airbrush tool and we can just brush out the the crispy rocks and the contrast underneath and with a, a fairly low opacity we can just keep brushing away and we can reveal those lovely bright rocks with all that contrast and color. This is just one way of doing it. It's a pretty crude way. I'm just showing you quickly so you understand how this technique works. We can select a soft grad and just reveal a little bit of the, the texture from that foreground. Yeah, that's, that's not bad, let's work with that. So what we've, of course, we need to do is to clean up the, the top of that hill. The easiest way to start doing that is again, using the top layer, the, the cloud layer, select the cloud. There's enough contrast there that you should just be able to select the cloud and not the mountain top. And then we just delete that mask that we don't want. 
Now in those darker areas it's a little bit trickier. So I just need to manually select the hill with the light on and delete some of that some of that mask. I think in this case I'm just going to choose a fine brush at 100% opacity and then just go and clean up that edge, make it you don't want a hard edge, you want to keep it nice and soft. Now again I'm doing this this is quick and dirty. I'd probably use an even finer brush still. And why don't we do that? We use seven pixels. And I'm just gonna go down the side of that hill and get rid of that nasty hard mask. Give it a nice, soft, distinctive edge. There we go. Just keep working it away there. That's not too bad. It's, I'm, I'm zoomed in so close you wouldn't really see that unless you made a massive print. But we'll, we'll clean it up anyway as best we can. Just gonna give a, give a nice low opacity, make the brush bigger and just blend in the bottom of that, that sunlit hill into the, into the background a little bit there. Well, I'm very happy with that result. Obviously, it's very monochromatic. I was just using warm tones and relying on light and dark to give it the pop that it needed. So if we just look at where we started, it was very flat, very boring file. And then we created a version with lots of contrast and clarity to bring out those rocks on that hillside. Next, we created a second version where the focus was on soft clouds and we created a layer in Photoshop with that and blended them together to get this. I did get some time to create a second version of this image. This time I introduced some cooler tones. So we've got two things going on here. We've got the contrast of light and dark and then also the contrast of color. The cool tones sit on the opposite end of the color wheel to the warm tones and Personally, I find contrast of color in landscape photography a pretty powerful technique to use. I do hope you found this little technique useful. And remember, in Photoshop, there are so many ways that you can achieve basically the same results. There is no right or wrong way. This is my way. It might not be the best way, but hey, it's how I do it. If it's any use to you, that's great. Now do let me know in the comments which version of this image you preferred. The first one, the warm tones, or the second one with the cool tones added. Thanks so much for watching.